Let's start from here. Dirty, sexy, freak, 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 freak. We got a new intro, baby. New intro. We always come with new sauce on this podcast. We don't use one intro. We use many intros. Just fire music. Back on the pod. We're back. How do you like that? You like that intro? Before I you get know, into this. We need, a, we need a vinyl rib. After, after 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 every single track that we drop on the pod, oh, right. is is that the soundboard? Oh my god, bro! The, the quality, soundboard. the quality of the pod, bro. I think we got fresh and fit, new all soundboard. streamers beat. Uh, who else? Just testing it out, baby. Just testing it out. Episode what? Number 28? Are we on 28 already? Episode number, I don't even know. Episode maybe 15, but we're back on the pod. We do this week in, week out. I know we missed a couple weeks before, but now we're doing it every week. We're here every week. Obedi on the pod, on the mic, whatever you want to call it. We might change that name. But we talk about house music. We talk about music production. We talk about what's going on in the industry. We talk about nightlife. We talk about DJing. We talk about venues in and around New York City and abroad. Every week, we're Late Night and Danny Vells. Yes, Listen, sir. Hit us up on the Spotify follow. Because if you follow us, you see that we have a new podcast pop up on your main page. Hit us up with a like because it helps us. Now, if this worked, let us know. If this, if it didn't work, I hope it stays in your head. So every time you see our pod, you cut, you you remember to click follow. But uh, yeah, this week we're gonna talk a little bit about. So we got a new song that we're working on. We've been talking about it, but we actually put in some work this week on it. Actually, put it put in a lot of work this week, and uh, we're actually gonna get together on uh, Saturday. We're going to the studio Saturday, and. We're going to be in the room and hopefully make some magic. So, uh, yeah, we hit up the studio called Pirate Studios, which is really cool. They haven't, uh, what do you call it? They haven't, um, they haven't, they haven't sponsored the the podcast. So it's, it's not a sponsorship for them, but yeah, it's called Pirate Studios. They, you can book studio space. You can book a DJ room and you can book a podcast room, but we're going for the studio just because we want to be in a room with that's, uh, that's treated. And you know, has some good speakers, and see what see what we can make happen. So, um, yeah, that loop that you just heard, that's uh, our song that we're working on together called "Lucky Day," and um, yeah, we're gonna put some arrangement work on it this weekend and, and see what happens. What do you think, Mike? I mean, yeah, I'm, ex- I'm excited because it's pretty much gonna be my first like track, and like that's gonna be debuted or released, right? And Mm-hmm. No one else I'd do it with but with you. So I'm hyped that it's with you. It's a collab. It could further both of our, you know, our careers, our production kind of uh, catalog. And it kind of puts a fire under your ass to like accomplish something, right? We put gave ourselves a deadline. Like that's something that's real important. If you really put yourself a deadline, you're not kind of just bullshitting and saying, Yeah, I'll work on it today, I'll work on it tomorrow. Then you'll really never get it done. Or you just drop in and you start a new track. But I'm excited to go into the studio, like you said. Can I have a nice sound treated room? Uh maybe maybe we'll hit up the DJ room, but what's the point? We got a DJ room, we got a studio, DJ studio in my apartment. So there's no real reason to give these guys our bucks. But <laughs> the studio is always fun. I mean, honestly, it's 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 a good place. And I think like every DJ should really I mean, producer should should have some sort of studio space, whether it's in your home, it's really just somewhere you could break away. Cause kind of, let's just say you work, you look, work at your, like your little work desk or whatever you work at every day, you, you associate that with work and you're like, I don't want to sit in that fucking seat again. I just mm-hmm. sat there working, you know, yeah. or you're working on other things, your business or anything on the side. Like you really got to make a little, little space for yourself to kind of really release it out. So 
I think it's worth every penny. And Lucky Day is definitely going to be a banger. I mean, off that preview, the bass line is super bomb. The drums are super bomb. And who knows? It's like with everything. When we, when we switch it up, when we go in the studio, start doing arrangement, you don't know what's going to happen. It could be a completely different song than what's being played right now. I had to give it to again. And, and, and this is an original, so... Spotify's don't, not going to take Yeah, don't, don't strike us, Spotify. Don't strike us, Spotify. YouTube. Woo! Nah, this is a banger, bro, already. And this is only a 20-second loop. And now nah, it's, it's fire. It was important when I was checking it out. You said put on your headphones. You yeah, know, yeah. it's funny how you you know you 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 switch that up, right? You think you're gonna have fun using operator or the Moog. You're like, yeah, this is what everybody uses. I mean, not operator. Excuse me, you're using the Moog, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you kind of like, let me go back to basics. Hit, hit operator, right? Uh, yep, I used operator. And, and, and then and then you have magic like that. Like mm-hmm. that's also another thing that kind of people could take away is less is sometimes more when it comes to music production. Like stop doing too much. Stop overthinking it. We're all guilty of it, right? I mean, we've discussed this on the podcast so many times. We're we're all guilty of it, and I think it's it's more of a numbers game. Um, of course, with with the splash of uh, quality, but in reality, if you get stuck on one track forever, or you know, you it's not working out, or if if you're just kind of stuck on two tracks, you're not releasing anything, then it kind of you know you're not really moving forward, uh, yeah. but. But the best part about it is that you're learning as well when you do these things. So there's there's wins and losses in each thing. Depends what your goals are in this thing, right? Uh, yeah, um, sorry. I was just looking for that that documentary, the name of the documentary that I was watching yesterday. Because I actually just remembered I wanted to talk about that. Because that's, that's such a good documentary, man. And it, it gave me a lot of... It gave me just a lot of, uh, like like a creative spark from what the originators were saying, which is uh, Marshall Jefferson and um, oh, DJ Pierre, Ron Hardy. Across the board, they were all saying, you know, we were just having fun making music. We didn't know what we were doing. We just wanted to make those parts of the songs that people love to dance to, put that into a track. And Marshall Jefferson said it. He's like, when I created that song, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I didn't know anything about music theory or anything about writing a song. So it doesn't sound like a great song. But it's the biggest hit, you know, classic ever for house music. That And, and he just did it because that's what he wanted. He just wanted, that was in his head and he wanted to put it out there. But just seeing the the videos of, how it started, how how that club, the warehouse started. So it, I don't want to misspeak here, but it started in Brooklyn, the, the documentary. And they were talking about Frankie Knuckles and Larry Levine. Mm-hmm. And then this guy went back to what is it, Chicago or Detroit and he opened the warehouse. And he didn't have it. This is where, this is funny when he said this. He's like, I didn't have a DJ and there was nobody around that could DJ. So I came back to New York and asked Frankie Knuckles if he would be the resident because Frankie Knuckles was in Larry Levan's like shadow. And I think at first he said no, but then he said, yeah. And um, he came over and started, you know, playing at the warehouse. But yeah, that was funny. Imagine thinking or saying like, oh, there's no DJ available. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, how, t- how times change. Yeah. Well- uh, but yeah, I mean, I got, I still got to tune into to, to the doc, but I, I let's watch like, it Saturday, bro. It's so good, but I want to watch it with you because I want to watch it again. I mean, shit, we'll so have it in the background good. in the studio and just have Frankie. Not, I mean, rest in peace, Frankie Knuckles, but having Mar- uh, Marshall Jefferson, Honey Dijon, DJ Pierre, all in the background, inspiring us. But that kind of goes with what you did with your track, right? You had it in your head, you let it out, right? Like my my first yeah. like production, kind of same thing, right? Just kind of mix of everything. <laughs> and then but you know like it, music is subjective and and that that's like people put too many of these rules like on themselves you know in terms of like pr- producing them. like listen to somebody that made the most timeless house music track in the history move your body mm-hmm. that track is timeless it's like listening to us it never gets old 
You never skip it when it starts playing. Mm-hmm. It's still being played today. It still blows up the cloud, the cloud today. It's been decades, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say it's more than four. Four decades has been doing that. And he said, I just wanted to compile something and I let it out there, right? So you never know. Like, I don't think like, I just think of an equivalent kind of song nowadays is like Fisher. Um, uh, what is it called? Lose it. Uh, lose it. Lose it. Yeah, losing it. Lose it. Can I lose right? it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that broke the barrier. Top forty open format DJs play that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hip hop DJs play that. Funk Flex plays that. I played it before. Funk Flex played it on. How yeah, it yeah, yeah. I heard wow. him play it. That's crazy. So, I mean, that's what I like about him. Also, as like a DJ, he'll play anything. He'll play Bad Bunny. He'll play shit like that. He uh, like I love his Christmas set too because. He'll play the old school, like classics, uh, like early, early Mm -hmm. 80s, um, late, uh, early 90s uh, hip hop. But yeah, I mean, really, it's just like, it's really a mentality thing these days, right? People just have the egos and kind of just are, they use comparisons or comparison is a thief of joy in their life. So if you hear like a Farrah Black song or you hear like a Black Child track, I'm just naming some producers i like off the top of my head yeah you're gonna be like oh i can't make anything like that but it's like what do you want to make like, you want to make what fair black is making mm-hmm. you want to make what black child's making like listen to the guy who started it from who started this shit he started this shit he made the most timeless track ever he said i'm going to the studio i'm fucking making a track and guess what he made it and it's one of the most amazing ones yeah. and like even when we're talking about your your track right it's different something not known what if it starts some other shit, some other movement, right? Because mm-hmm. this started like, I won't say that the track started house music, but they just started making music. And the funny part is, because I did see like snippets of, of the doc. It's like, oh yeah, we, we started it. And you know, the funniest thing was Caucasian people loved it. Yeah. He's like, we're going to class, there's a bunch of Caucasian people in it, but we're all African-Americans start, starting this. So it was like interesting. Yeah, and I, I'm not trying to make it anything divided by any race or anything like that. But what I'm mm-hmm. saying is that the music holds no barriers. So you know, hip hop is so embedded in our culture. You will see twelve year olds at rap concerts going crazy, singing everything word for word. Mm-hmm. You'll see grandmas at tech at techno at movement festival and at festivals as well. So well, if you release a track and you don't get any traction on it. Either your social media game sucks, which is, you know, probably everyone's fault because nobody wants to really, nobody really has the biggest interest in that, but it's something important to know. But also, I mean, you know, perhaps they didn't pick up the steam that that it's not ready for yet, but one day you will. So I think it's always important just to release whatever you have and and just go with it. Yeah, it's, it's there forever. So, yeah, you know, and like I, I told you in that, I sent you a message, you know, in five years, it might, it might pop because, you know, people go through your catalog and hear something or, you know, people start getting to know who you are and other DJs like, oh, what else does he, ha- does he have on his catalog? And they might, that might come up like, oh shit, this is fire. This is dope. Um, But yeah, so no, the funny part was when d- we, we, we knew the story, we knew the story, how house music started, but it was just cool seeing them talk about it on the documentary. But the funny part was when I forgot who called them, but someone called DJ Pierre and they said, you got to like, come check out England. Like what's going on over here? And all their music and house music was like crazy in England at the time. And uh, he was like, there's black people over there that like house music. <laughs> and the dude on the phone said, no, 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 it's all white people. And he was like, white people like house music. <laughs> That's crazy. Right. Because. The misconception, not anymore, but like back in my day when I was young, like my Dominican and Puerto Rican friends used to make fun of me because I like, they used to call it techno music. They're like, oh, you going to a techno club? And I mean, yo, do you know where this started from? But the misconception is that, oh, it's it's white people music. Dun, dun, uns, uns. But no, it came out of disco. They just sped up disco, bro. That's That's all they did. They sped up disco. And it was black dudes without money who just started making music with cheap, uh, cheap uh, synthesizers like a roll. Yeah. Synth- the dude was like, "We didn't have any money. This was forty bucks." Yeah. And nowadays, it's like, "Oh my god, they're rolling this, rolling that," you know. And look how it started from from nothing. It, it's a luxury to have an analog synthesizer now. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like a real like analog one, like a Roland or whatever the expensive ones are. Like the real, not the emulators that we use in that, uh, Ableton. So it's funny how like the, the the script changes, the availability makes it more saturated, right? But it's also funny you say that because growing up too, like people are like, oh, you're going to that? Nobody was ever into it. Mm-hmm. But when the EDM explosion happened in like early 2010s, everyone's like, oh, what's this? So you'd see people you never expected that would be at these parties. You'd be like, what the fuck are you doing here? I thought you hated this shit. Oh, no, nah, it's fun. I mean, I'll be some of these people who are on drugs. You know, they're all like cracked out of their minds at these mm-hmm. parties, right? I'm like, are you here for the drugs or the music, right? Mm-hmm. Is this an excuse for you to kind of do some degeneracy or live the your hedonistic dreams? Or is this kind mm-hmm. of about the music? And you see who makes it in, who makes it out, who leaves, who goes for, for music or this or that. So, again, it goes to the point. It's... I think I, you know, it stuck with me forever when when the point blank uh, professor told me he's like music is subjective. Yeah. He's like he's like he's like I'm not grading like your final project, for example, uh, on uh, you know is it, good? is it is it a good song? Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. no, he's like it, did you did you hit all the criteria? Did you kind of make it sonically somewhat appealing, even if what you're trying to create? And you know he was decently satisfied with what I made, but. He's also, you know, he's a jazz musician. I made a tribal track, so obviously. And but he <laughs> loved, but he loved congas. He loved yeah, congas. Yeah. He's like, oh, my roommate was played congas, and we'd have dope like jam sessions. I'm like, that's sick. Like, I wish I kind of like explored like music a bit earlier. Even though I loved it, and I DJed for so long. Like, kind of even having interactions like that, like some dude that plays the congas, some dude that plays the saxophone. And kind of like the people that actually play instruments and getting some like connections and meeting up in that kind of like realm of music. But yeah, it's, it's subjective. Nothing's really trash unless it truly is like, you know, not, not a nicely organized song, you know, like they made dubstep and that was that dubstep was a fucking huge genre. You know, it made billions, billions of dollars mm-hmm. and, and there was a huge following of it. Subjective. I think it's trash. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's, there's, there's absolutely no like, musical uh fucking influence there you know it's just bomb 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 but of course they're using i like, like some of it i like i like some of it like if i hear it and i'm like oh this sounds dope uh but not so it's funny because people think like i think young kids think that all oh, skrillex invented dubstep but it came from the uk it was started in the uk some of the uk stuff like if i hear it on bbc i'm like oh this sounds dope but i wouldn't I'm not going to a club to fucking just hear dubstep. Well, yeah, they love DMB there, so DMB is a major oh, influence yeah, yeah, yeah. into into dubstep. That that high BPM, mm-hmm. um, uh, lots of snares, hi hats, and then and and you know a, a drum, you know, a boom, yeah, it's boom, kind of like rock, boom, a little bit like the rock of house music. Yeah, it's funny. Speaking of that, I was watching today Diplo. Uh, there's 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 Coachella, and then there's Stagecoach. I think it's called. Um, which is the country music equivalent, and he was DJing there, and he mixed in um, I forgot the the song. I'm sure you I'm sure you know it. Uh, let me let me just check it out. It is the what, that Avicii song. No, no. So he was basically playing a house music set, right? Like he would play like an MK song, etc. But then he mixed in somehow. Have you ever seen the rain? You ever oh, heard that? I love yeah, I love that song. Yeah, I love that song. I love that band. Yeah. Yeah, so then like he mixed that in, you know, and then he it kinda, went crazy. Oh yeah, all of them did. And then of course he filtered out like um the rain par and then they went back into the song and then went on to another like country song and boom, mixed in mm-hmm. uh like you know, a tech house, whatever, a commercial tech house track into it. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's, it, music is subjective, you know, and like it's funny that they have a stage even at a country uh, a country festival. You know what that means, right? That's it's um it's growing. I, I think I said a while ago, I'm like, this is going to grow like in little markets all across yeah. America. And, you know, of course, they're going to they're going to, you know, commercialize it heavy. And and that's what's happening. But that's what happens in America all the time. Uh, but but at least it's it's uh, exposing people to it. And once they get over the, you know, the commercial stuff, then they start looking for like. Ooh, I want something a little, a little bit more, a little bit groovier, like the people that stay in it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the festivals is for you know, it's, it's for kids. Like, we're it's not also go to EDC well, festival. stage stage cello or stage coach, whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Like, 
it's more adult, right? I don't think like, a lot of well, kids are going for that. No, part. no, that, that, yeah. I'm talking about like, like EDF, EZU, and like you know EDC. That's like more for like younger kids. No, for sure. I, the U.S. hosted festivals, absolutely. I think the last one that kind of is for everybody is um, Demf uh, or mm-hmm. Movement. Yeah. That one's kind of you could see eighteen because I think eighteen year old is eighteen to get in, mm-hmm. um, and whatever age until mm-hmm. you're up to. So yeah, but other than I think what's dope about festivals is that you get exposed to different music, right? Like a DJ will be playing, you're walking between tents, and you hear like one DJ playing, you're like, "Holy shit, what is that?" You walk in, and you're like, "Oh wow, what a dope vibe!" Mm-hmm. You may be exposed that way. So I think festivals are really important in, in terms of like building building this out even more. Yeah, yeah. And now you can see because Coachella used to really have a small, tiny tent to the side. Um, you know, oh, for house music, for house music, yeah. anything else music related, and now they got a huge tent. They got Golfo playing there, Gordo, yeah. uh, MK. I mean, you know, the the bill is built like a little bit like weird. It's kind of like you have one stage, so you got to fit everybody in, so they don't, it doesn't really flow, but it kind of, I guess, does. I don't know how to really explain it, but it's kind of like a show. Like you know, there's no like transitioning of the sets. You kind of just yeah, finish, yeah. everyone cheers, and then the next person comes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's you see the growth there at Coachella, right? Which is more so like all genres, right? You have every yeah. single genre there, and like the stage is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And then one thing that bothered me about it is when they put them on the bigger stages, and I get it, I fucking get it. You got to kind of play to the crowd, Super and but they play like you know, I, like they got it. They play different. But if you really stand by the music, you should have played one of your regular sets. And I'm sure people would have enjoyed the shit out of it. You know, there's a major nobody's gonna walk away in the crowd. It's fucking packed to the yeah. brim. Like, yeah, so but you I, know what they do? You know what? I'm sorry to cut you up. One, I just want to say one thing. You know what they do do? If they don't like the song, they just stand around. I saw a video, Jamie Jones DJing, and uh, you know, it's, he it seems like he was catering the set more to like yeah. commercial Coachella, but he was playing that like really smooth, laid back house. Like his song, I'm in my only life. But he was playing this song, and there were a bunch of kids just standing there like this because they didn't like the, they didn't like the song. They weren't feeling it. Yeah, I mean, it's also like short attention spans, like yep. social media, uh, like you know, kind of uh, ADD kind of influences. Like everyone, it's not a joking matter, like having that, but people like really abuse that word. But just shortest att- attention spans and kind of like just needing everything like now. The it's drop. the gratification. It needs to be a, a, a banger. You need to have my attention the whole time. You have to switch songs really quickly. So it's still a good thing because they yeah. started moving. Some people started shifting to the bigger stages. Like mm-hmm. it's a good thing for the U.S. because I'm sure DJs could give it. For them, it's a big accolade, right? I played at Coachella. This is a historic festival. It's been going on for decades. I believe decades now. So absolutely, it's shifting in, but I don't think the people are ready yet. Like to your point, like mm. I need this now, this experience. That's why, like guys like Wade are huge here, and like you know Weber House, yeah, because boom, boom, something that I know from Top Forty, boom, boom, mm. and you don't really even the beat is the same, and then you know the break is is some some opera song or some bullshit, yeah, you know? or some hip hop thing, some really quick like hip hop like uh, you know little music part. I, how I, I wonder what it is, but I prefer to hear like Guti and Luciano and Ricardo Vigil Lobos just straight like loop that shit for. I don't care if you loop it for three hours, like different loops. I don't. I don't even need a drop. I just need that. I love that constant groove, you know. And then it comes up a bit, and it's like a it's like a build to like a drop, but the drop is then. It's just really subtle. Just the beat comes back. That to me, I, nothing beats that. I, I I go. I think it's crazy when not crazy. What's the word I want to use? Like I don't understand when someone doesn't like that. You know, like you don't like the, you don't want to groove. You don't want to catch that like really cool vibe. You you just wanna, you just wanna hear. Like how many times are you gonna hear that and jump up and down to it? No, I mean, it. it's interesting because, like, that's kind of what breaks people, like, on the divide, right? 
there's people that'll say, oh, it's the same beat over and over again. Yeah. Right. And then there's the people that say like, oh, this is a fire like track. I'm really enjoying it. You can see that in, in Gucci's productions. Like it's like, even if you look at the waveform of it, the drops, mm-hmm. there's very minimal ones. Mm-hmm. And it's just a constant groove. And I play a lot of his shit. Like, and whatever tracks I've had from him are just absolute like bangers. bangers yeah. And there's so many hidden ones that you can't even find. Mm-hmm. If you start going on like a little like rabbit hole for his stuff and you start kind of like digging in your crates or even mm-hmm. looking for new Gucci stuff, it's like, wow. Like, holy shit. His remixes, like those are so super, super underrated. Yeah. And the but instruments it, he uses in there and the congas, the drums. Like there's one nah, song that great. goes, it just keeps going. boom, and then the p- when he throws a piano in, now he's a real music composer. He's fucking, he's nice, man. Under underrated too, man. You know, you don't. He, I wish I saw him head. I wish he would be headlining a lot more than than he does. But that is what it is. You know what he does, though. I mean, it's the live sets, and like I think yeah. he's done like extended live sets. But you're really limited to like two hours when you do that. Uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of preparation. You got to carry a lot of gear around and shit. Mm-hmm. So it's not easy. I think that's kind alive. of, that's a bit of, it's not to the detriment of him because that's what he, he's getting to do what he loves the most and he's doing it live. But it's also like, you know, less gigs. But I don't really think like he's out for out there for that, right? Yeah, that no. pinnacle fame. He's like, I'm happy like with this. You give me my slot. I, I'm doing what I love. Mm-hmm. And then I'm in the studio 24-7, you know? And he collabs with so many different artists all the time. I forgot where he's based out of, but he's always working uh, like around yeah. the music. So, I mean, like uh, just at a point, like it really divides the people. Is it the same beat or like, oh, I want something new, right? And that's kind of like a divide even like in people that are actual like house music goers. Mm-hmm. Like, is it the same beat? And they'll say, ah, oh, he plays like kind of mad repetitive uh or he plays a lot of repetitive beats or he plays a long a long track he lets it play out right and i like when these like to do that when they play out tracks yeah uh like long and it's not easy to do because you know sometimes you got a, a short slot and you got to kind of pack in everything you want to express in your set but it kind of that's also interesting the divide like what to what, what what brain pattern kind of decides the the same beat kind of approach? Yeah, so like, yeah. oh my god, this is amazing! Like, yeah. I could sit here for hours and just listen to this guy. Yeah, you can hear, like, you know when when Luciano change, you know when there's another loop coming in. He like he plays he plays one loop constantly. It's a top loop he plays constant, and then he just drops other shit on top of it. But you can hear it, you know. So like. When it's changing or when it's or doing something different, like you're like, oh, you get hype and you get excited. I think it's the people that don't probably don't really understand what's going on with the music that just get bored fast. And maybe they're not interested in the music because I'm so interested in it. I can hear what's like. It's not I'm trying to listen. I can just hear it because I'm just into it. So I'm listening to everything and I kind of feel what's going on. But I think that's why those people they prefer, you know, the the pomp and circumstance. You know what what uh, Wade does. You know, like it's it's exciting for them. Yeah, I, and I get it. But don't say that our shit is boring, right? When you're you're doing the same thing, but just you're just getting excited for that. 30 second drop and then you're waiting for the the next song to come on for the next drop so you're doing the same thing that we're doing but i just feel ours <laughs> ours is more fun yeah it, it's crazy it's crazy uh that these like samples from like r&b still to this day are still being sampled uh and like used for tracks like central c song sampling that um I forgot the original but then uh, wade sampling it but what's interesting nowadays is how is the game going to change with AI making music? And how are we going to start seeing variety? Are we going to see, and people that are not hopping on top of it, seeing kind of uh, them being shoved to the back and not really making this kind of like crazy creative kind of sounds that AI could push you forward, right? Like, I don't know if you saw, but there was that release with Drake and The Weeknd, Mm -hmm. which was an absolute banger by that kid with Ghost Rider. And he's genius. He hit his whole identity. He made a new one today. It was... uh, Bad Bunny and Rihanna? 
Yeah, he made uh, like a Bad Bunny Rihanna a collab with AI. So it's interesting how you know that's gonna kind of change the game. Like right right away, it's expected. You saw record labels strike it down right away. I had to save on Spotify the next day. I'm in my car. Instantly, yeah, you couldn't even click it. It's like disabled everything. And it's like, hold on, what what's what's copyright about it? What's what's fucked about it? The voice, the voice. That's yeah. but it, it is it is off. It isn't on point though. What do they own Drake's voice? Like the label? I I, I guess it's his. Well, if that's the label that he's under, I guess it's his image and likeness. But if I'm Drake, well, I mean, he can't say it because he's under the label. But the label should say, leave it up and just make a deal with Ghost Rider. Like, hey, we get, you know, let's split the profits. Like Grime said, Grime was like, yeah. oh, anybody who makes music with my voice, we're splitting the profits. 50-50. Yeah. But, yo, they're so big corporations are so quick to like, oh, we got to shut this down. Bro, make money off of it. Like, it's getting streams. Get your money. But I think the future is going to be just more competition. There's going to be a lot of kids making AI music, and it's just going to be a lot more competition. But, uh, you know, are they going to just be making music and making money off of that, or are they going to also perform? if DJ, like, so you, they have to be DJ as well if they want to perform, right? Um, But if they're making, like, beats like just strictly beats for hip-hop then they can make money that way because they're making beats for hip-hop but i think what what ai music is going to be good for is sync licensing you know like music on movies tvs game shows advertisements like ai music is going to kill that shit because there's a whole economy for uh, producers to make money doing sync deals like that right? yeah it's something i'm looking into now too but AI is going to fucking murder that shit. I'm going to use AI for that, you know? No, yeah. And that's that's the I mean that's the scary part, but it's also not like get with the times. And this, the scariest part about this is that labels are going to invest, the ones that are majors are going to invest a shit ton of money, the best programmers get their own like intellectual like asset, like their own assets that could generate these uh codes that could generate kind of these songs, right? If just for example, if like one artist is giving you shit, or you're they're having you're having trouble with them, or they're kind of a a, a risk to have them on the label, they're just gonna say, "All right, well, we have this deal with you." And a lot of people don't look at the the, the fine print and say, "We're gonna use your voice and this AI these uh, these scripts, and we're gonna start we're gonna release two more albums because that's what you signed signed up for, by the way, um, because you don't want to make any more music." So it's gonna hurt. I, it's the sad part though i think there's also like a sad part to this that the human brain is kind of ceasing to be influencing music and just general life like it, it, it's helping the situation right because look how amazing that song was but it's also hurting the situation like i don't know i always imagine just like a, a family coming together like a dad playing a guitar a kid playing i don't know like a banjo uh like somebody playing the tambourine <laughs> Like that's gonna still continue to exist, but like in terms of like a major scale of of like you know music that people consume on a day to day, mm -hmm. the human influence is gonna be slowly but surely. It's not gonna happen now. Yeah, it's gonna happen slowly in five years, but call it in fifteen years, there's gonna be I think more AI music than than human made music, or it's gonna be yeah. half and half to the to the T split. And I'm sure the people are extremely yeah, like clever that. now with the, with the internet. They're gonna find a way around the labels, but the labels are gonna be strong, like a, like a colossal. They can never like you know supersede. So well, somebody, they... sorry, somebody can make a uh, Spotify for AI creative music. I mean, you can make you can make AI meditation or what do you call it? Uh, focus music. Put it on YouTube and kill it. Because people listen to that, they just press play on it, and it just plays all day. And you see these meditations or focus videos with that music, hundreds of millions of views, hundreds of millions of plays. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, I keep saying I, I want to look into it to to try. It. I've tried one. It's called Boomy, but it's to like make house music and stuff, and it, it makes trash. It makes no. Trash yeah, I, I think you show you showed it to me, yeah. but uh, to the point, it's it's who's early gonna, it's early days, you know. You know who's gonna get killed first. Uh, I don't think the house music producer will get killed because, you know, 
we perf- perform, right? DJ, hip hop, and and pop. You know, anybody that anybody that makes music for a singer for an artist, they're gonna get murdered within within five years. Because if I am, let's say I'm songwriters a too. Oh, yo, though they're done. There's there's songwriting AI tools now. Like, but let's say I'm a rapper, especially up and coming. Why am I gonna pay twenty five thousand dollars for your beat, and I could just pay nine dollars a month for whatever platform, and I got a fire ass hip hop beat, right? Like they're done, bro. Hip hop producers, it's fuck, but they're done. The only producers that are gonna you know, keep being top of the game or whoever's at the top of the game at the time, like Kanye West or Swiss Beats, Pharrell. And those guys are already, you know, they've done their, they've done their, um, they made their way already. They're done. So, yeah, it's going to suck for those, those, those uh, producers. That's why I'm with, I'm with what Elon said. I take a step back on the AI and let it do a slow burn and kind of <laughs> let it get embedded into society a little bit easier. You can't do big bangs, but. People have limited patience, limited attention spans. They want it now, now, now. Also, if it's just call, call, if it's cost effective, it's gone. You know, it's funny. I mean, these big media uh, giants are also collapsing, like you know, ma- majorly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're, they're all collapsing, you know, piece by piece. Yep. And Bye. then, uh, and then having like, if you think about it, like. It's probably that they're going to have like the parent company just create some new thing and have AI write all the articles like, oh, yeah, give me a synopsis in this tone um, of about, you know, current uh, situation X, Y, Z. And then, you know, AI, you know, 30 seconds. There's no waiting for the writer. There's no uh, benefits. There's no days off. There's no heart beating in the office. There's no need for uh you know office space they're gonna just start using it i'm sure that a lot of articles already are done for yeah. you know are already being written by ai i mean uh, for sure social media is flooded by bots that are like uh, ai yeah. driven uh, you can see rep- rep- repetitive comments i mean a good a good thing we could do is just use those ai bots and grow our engagement and just I have know, them keep writing bullshit i know you know, know fire track and it's gonna be like you know joe Schmo from alabama or some shit you know <laughs> And yeah. it's writing, writing all your amazing track, but obviously it's not, it's not natural growth. I, I don't know. I feel like, you know, we've kind of been through the ages or the times that, you know, we're both unks now. So <laughs> like we've been through the times where there was no, like a computer was a luxury I know. internet. You need to use your phone line to get on ew, it. Ew, ew. Cell phones didn't exist. Social media didn't exist. Right. And music was still amazing. Right. Some of the most amazing music that's still being sampled to this day or even created. Uh, has been you know from from history now that there there, there's such a lack of uh i guess the creativeness and uh, ingenuity that's that goes into this stuff that but yeah like they're stuck they're stuck sampling yeah yeah of course like in hip-hop music they don't a scotch storch said it he's like i think it's coming back around where you're gonna start hearing like music back in hip-hop in hip-hop uh tracks but it's still, you know, there's still the same old drill. I mean, I haven't even heard what's really going on in hip hop. And hip hop's going through like a downturn right now. It's not even really popping right now. What's popping right now is house music and reggaeton or whatever, Latin trap, you know? Yeah, yeah, big time. It's funny because I went to Rite Aid today and I hear like slow, organic, like deep house in the background. <laughs> and I'm like, yo. What the fuck? Where is that band? Uh, which what was the one that I mentioned? The one with the, like you know how they have the Walmart music and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, have you ever seen the rain playing in the background or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like having the, having that in the background now it's like it's slow house music. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? What's mm-hmm. going on? Like, what's going on in Rite Aid over here? It's so, all yeah. house lobby. I mean, house lobby. Um. Hotel lobby house music now everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, poolside, everything. It's it's a default. It's a default. Even the shittiest pools will have a DJ come through and play like that kind mm-hmm. of European commercial, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like uh, Ferrari, that song. I don't know if uh, you ever heard it. Um, Ferrari. It was super. Oh, by James Hype. Like James Hype-esque music. Mm-hmm. Ferrari is like you know kind of playing. He's playing shit like that, you know. So mm-hmm. I don't yo, know. Not, it's interesting. Yo, you know what? I'll fucking take a pool gig. 
that I fucking DJ five, six, like a real job. And even if they were paying me like three, five hundred dollars a, a day just to fucking stand at a pool and play, have a drink. Like, I'll do that shit all fucking day for house music, you know? All right. So now imagine you're in Palm Beach. It's beaming 110. I love there's, hot weather. There's no fan. It's humid. It's humid. I love that. I love and humidity. Get bro, real, bro. I do. No, all my life, bro. I love, like people say they hate humid summers in New York. I'm like, I fucking love when it's humid. And when you just sweat, just standing there, I love that. Okay, you're the man for the job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck. Because the guy, to Florida. The guy that was DJing at Palm Beach, where I was at, it was like the I forgot what hotel it was, but um, like he was like a heavy set guy, and he's like sweating balls. He has a towel. He's like fuck. He's drinking drinks. <laughs> oh, there's the like towel. there's a bachelorette party there. The girls are like yelling at him. He's like fuck. Like okay, I'll play it next. Like so, I mean, you're already used to that stuff from like kind of doing open format, but. I'm just saying, being in that, no fan on you, and you're not even under the umbrella, and it's just beaming on you all day. I love that sun, bro. I mean, oh, shit, you, you're the man for the job, bro. Yeah. Actually, I just got an idea, man. I'm going to start hitting up hotels with fucking outdoor pools in the summer. Like, yo, you, you guys need a, a daytime poolside DJ? I'm your man. We should try to get a summer club gig. That was kind of like what I'm trying for. It's on the block for me. Is on the block for oh wait it's on the block for you it's on it's, it's down the block for me what is what do you, what is it summer club it's on top of revel oh well the name is summer club I thought you said we should try to get it used it used, it used to be um what the fuck was it called <clears throat> a profundo oh oh they already changed the name what happened I mean I think the owners changed and then just flipped it but now this one's huge like this brand is huge they start collabing with um Hyde Beach. And oh, Hyde okay. beaches around the world, like, you know, yeah. major. And you start doing your own parties there. And, they, you know, they have the pink little influence. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a dope spot. So, hey, listen, you want to test this humidity, how much you love it? No problem, bro. I'll try my best. So you can just sit there and scorch in New York City, <laughs> 120 degrees sun. No pool. You, there's I no pool it. water no, for no you. Pool. No it. pool. Just no pool. Give me water and a couple of drinks throughout the day and play house music. Oh, well, that's a dream for me, bro. I love doing that shit. I mean, I don't like sweating, but I mean, I like sweating. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. but you're the man for the fucking job, bro. Tank top, man, or like a tennis shirt with the, you know, the the fucking not the holes, but you know, that it's it, the shirt breeze. Oh man, I'll do that all fucking summer, bro. Every there's the, the there's no breeze either, just so you know. It's, I'm fine, no breeze. No, no breeze. No breeze. I'm cool with that. I'll bring my own fan. Nah, no fan, brother. No Just fans the allowed. One, the little one that you... Oh, no no fans allowed. No, right. fans allowed. no fans allowed. I thought you loved the heat, bro. I do love the oh, heat. Oh, you want to blow hot? You want to blow hot air on you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, like yeah, yeah. Air. You know when you're just chilling and you get like one little breeze, but it's just a hot-ass breeze? I fucking love that. It's like... Uh, I do like that. I can't lie. But DJing in six hours, the sun's beaming on you? Oh, my God. I mean, I... If I got to do it, like, I'm doing it, but I'm not enjoying it. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fucking it's hot. But it's not like a it's not like a set. You're going hard, right? It's daytime pool. It's not it's not a party. It's for the, you know, the patrons that are that are staying at the hotel. and They're having a drink. Nobody's really dancing. You know, it's not like a party party vibe. It's just like poolside joints, you know, like easy, cool shit. Maybe later in the evening you start picking it up, you know, Mambo Stilo. But. Yeah, that's what that's when the sun goes away, bro. That's and when you pick job, it up. And it's a, remember, I said this is a job, so I'll take that job over any. I'll take this job over any fucking job in the world, bro. I'd rather stand. I'll stand in two hundred degree weather, nah. DJ for twelve hours. No, no, no I'm with you. I'm with office. you. I'm with you on that, hundred <laughs> percent. In terms of the circumstances, absolutely, I'll take that job any day. And it's always funny because it's always like some old ass dude. It's like what. It's kind of like like from the documentary, yeah. like yo, we couldn't find a DJ. Let's find this dude and just stick him in here. Yeah, or he's been like in the circuit in that town for for years, like oh, old trusty DJ Dave or some shit. You know, well, they what have I mean? a or well, they have a friend. A friend always knows a DJ, bro. Everybody, ev- I think you know how they say like, oh, you're only like six people away from this person or that person. I think you're only. I'll say I want to say one, but I'll say I'll say two. Only two people away from a DJ. Like, 
Mike, do you know a DJ? No. Uh, Ed, you know a DJ? Yes. And that's with everybody. Two people away from knowing a DJ. Bro. Yeah, that, that's fair. These days, especially, it's so it's so saturated that, I mean, I think everybody's a DJ. I don't. I think New York so much. I mean, actually, yeah, definitely fucking yeah, New York. Yeah. What the fuck am I saying? Yeah. Uh, but the whack part is, is that you know, there's a lot of shit that's saturated. But you're like you, the, you know, your thought process is, oh, you know, but only the best get to you know move forward, right? Usually, like in sports, only nope. the best move forward, right? But in DJing, there's something about DJing that scrubs can move forward uh, as long as they're they can bring a hundred people out or cloud. sell tickets. Yeah. Cloud, cloud yep. sells more than skills yep. now, right? So crazy, crazy, bro. You can't do that anywhere else, bro. You can't you can't really do it at working at a corporation. You can kind of get away with it for a while, but you get caught one day. You know, if you're like as as you move up and up, one day eventually, like you know, the the uh, eggs come to hatch. Like, oh shit, you suck, you're gone. But you can't do that in football, and baseball, and swimming, and basketball. You can't be a scrub and get to the NBA. But somehow you could be a fucking scrub and DJ some of the biggest clubs in the world. I don't understand that. It's, it's clout, right? And honestly, I think it's net uh, network equals your net worth. Uh, and yeah. basically, you know the right people. You got enough clout. You you suck enough dick. Uh, you know what I mean? The kind of ki- and, and what I mean by that, I mean that as an analogy. Basically, <laughs> yeah, you kiss, kiss an ass. Basically, yeah. is what I mean is you know you, you're gonna get what you want. You know what I mean? People love getting their ass kissed these days. Just, you know, having somebody kind of just on them saying, yes, yes, sir. Uh, no, no, sir. Uh, yes, madam, whatever you say. And, like, it's tough because I feel like people that are true to the music, it's just hard for them to do that. Because, like, like, dude, I'm a fucking good DJ. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm going to give you your worth. It's not like, oh, like, you know, oh, I'm going to bring 100 people. Oh, you're going to DJ well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Oh, okay. I trust you. You're a good kid. You know, shit like that. Yeah. I've heard, yo, I've heard bad, bad. I mean, you know, they never really progress, but I've heard like horrible DJs at some top clubs. And I was just standing there thinking like, how did this guy get put on? How did he get here to DJ at Marquee? And he's train wrecking. Now, thankfully, now they got sync. So now it's like, if you suck, you can kind of get away with it. But with house music, I mean, with hip hop, the no way. Cat, sync doesn't sync does not work on hip hop. They slam. They just slam yeah. tracks in hip hop. Yeah, yeah, it's like bang, bang, bang. Yeah. But even with house music, it's like okay, you're using sync. Good for you, right? It got the hard part out of the way for you. It matched the two songs up, but like it's still you, a lot. You're still not mixing two tracks together. You're still not like you're not actually throwing like a like a journey together you know you're not really doing shit you know you're just kind of playing tracks and you're kind of just you know dancing to it you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. there, there's like more to like sync button didn't really ruin the game i mean yeah it did i'm sorry i'll take that back <laughs> it fucking ruined the game but it's like you could the sync button didn't like kind of like put a foot over people that know how to really dj because yeah. if you really listen to the mix okay you synced that up good you got fucking everything beat matched up i mean you're not you're not DJing in key. You're not you're not kind of giving a journey of the music. You're kind of just playing banger after banger, or not. Excuse me, not banger, but popular song after popular song after popular song, and they're just many replicas of each other. And whoever kisses the most ass in this little replica world, then you know they're gonna win. Yeah. And the the latest trend, which I hate the most. Are these fucking like weird transitions people record themselves doing, or like they, they you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm, yeah. So they they try to do like these mixes, right? Like kind of like drops. And I think I showed you this one kid. He they basically play like a song, you know, like uh, uh I forgot how it goes. Like you ever heard that song? It goes bum 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 bum. So it's, it's like a James hype song, I think. It's like bum 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 bum. Right, so th- th- this it's one of those tracks mm. that then when the break comes, they'll like kind of like either use their fader or like kind of just mix in the next song, and it would be like you know I guess a vocal, and they'll try to mix the tracks together or kind of like have a, a slam the next track in, you know what I mean, and kind of like have it synced up perfectly in terms of like the the way it would mix in. 
Mm-hmm. And they do it like on, it's kind of like a competition on Instagram. Like of kids yeah, doing it. I haven't it. seen that. I haven't seen that. And I don't know how to explain like what the fuck they're doing. Cause it kind of doesn't make any sense to me. Like what's the point, you know? It's kind of like how they, they bring in do, the track. Like they, are they trying not, to do a blend? Like put an acapella on a, on a like, yeah, no. So of course it's blending, right? Like two tracks together. Like I, I don't know if you remember that guy that got popular during the pandemic, Sidekick, the one that wore the mask, the, the hip hop kind of uh, like blends and transitions and stuff like that. Uh, but basically, yeah, they're trying to like blend these tracks, or they kind of do like a just like a quick transition, and they kind of like flows with it, right? Oh. Are you talking about when they like oh when they when they do the like these are these are the top five songs in hip hop and they just do it really quick those really that, quick that's songs. one of the cancers of social media with hip hop <laughs> this is yeah. a completely different one where okay. they like it's just a kid like kind of just sitting there like using like you know Serato or something mm-hmm. and like it's cool because kids are getting out there and trying to express themselves but it's like yeah. a kid like that will be put on like quicker than any any other motherfucker out there that really has like it, it, it in them, you know? You can sell tickets, man. If you're selling tickets, though, you get put on, man. It, even if they have to put a a ghost premix on there, they, and if you're selling a thousand tickets, you can get any gig you want. But hold on, hold on. I got to, before we continue, hold on a second. Before we continue, just, this was in my head and I really got to get it. I really got to put it out there again. Are you ready? What are we going to do Saturday, though? Hey. That groove is... I feel like I'm in a rooftop somewhere. It's hot. It's 100 degrees. I'm sweating. It could be a warehouse, too. A club, yeah. everything. I told you, bro. When I came with the idea of what we gotta, how we gotta break it apart, I know it's gonna be a fucking banger, bro. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a fucking banger. This is like has the Gucci, uh, Gucci elements. It got fucking our yeah, elements. Right? It breaks think- apart. Fucking like it broke up a fucking a historic and one of, like the most beautiful salsa tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, at least, like uh, I love that song. But I mean. We got to focus on arrangement, yeah, giving some arrangement. variation, but yeah, we don't got to go crazy. Like, we're not going to go like wheat style all the way, kind of like, you know, glitch drums and all this shit. Like, I think just doing too much is like the new problem as well. Like, like it, it it's not a problem. I'm kind of misspeaking here, but it's people try to replicate the sound that's going on. And then they kind of made a subgenre yeah. within it. And that's cool. But it's kind of like now it makes people think that if you want to pop, and kind of all the big DJs are kind of playing one or two tracks of this. You got to do too much, and there's no need for all that. There's no, there's no need. By the time you recreate recreate that sound, like you make a track in that sound, they're already on to the next sound. Yeah, so it's exactly. the worst, that's no, the worst thing to do. And I hear a lot of the glitch drums uh, uh, influence nowadays on a lot of productions, like uh, like even new ones for coming out of the UK, like even like a regular tech house track will have some elements of the kind of the weeds glitch drums and. Honestly, what a genius for creating that because it is fucking dope. It's and you're okay trying to have it though. It gives it, it gives it. No, some very something variation. different. But we're not gonna go crazy, right? And we kind of had a plan, commercial, and then a twisted remix. Fuck that. We're going straight with this one. We're championing this to like the depth of of, of it. I um, mean, <laughs> yeah. and, and and that's it, right? It is an I edit, have... so we might get in trouble, but fuck no, it. No, I don't care. We're there's going no trouble. We're I'm going Spotify. F- full steam ahead, bro. We're going full steam ahead. I actually have an idea, and uh, I think I think you said this was a good idea too. I think we I think you mentioned it. Uh, we anyway, we both have the same idea. I think I think we should just make it like kind of arrange like a Guti track or uh, who else or the Butch song. They're ready, you know, just like a long loop. And just, you know, in di- small breaks throughout, taking like minimal things out, but making it minimalistic like that. Because it's a really good, it's a good dancing song, you know? No, it is. But we do need that one big break to bring in the, the original in a very yeah. cool fucking way. And then, boom, we continue that that, that Gucci like loop throughout. It's going to be a long track. We got to make yeah. it like six to eight minutes. It'll just be uh, that cause... one that one drop. But it's not even going to be a crazy build. It's just, we're just going to take elements out and then... Da, 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 da. That's actually I need to, you know, well, we got to work on that because I don't know 
how to trans. I don't know how to transition to that smoothly, like that, because you know it slows down. Da 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 da. I was thinking taking the. Da, we should, da, we should da, yeah, we, da, we should da, cut da, that. Da, 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 and kind of like a doom. Then da 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 da, and then bringing it in with the pop pop pop, you know, something like that. We have the vocal stripped already too, so we could also we don't have to necessarily drop it in fully. We could we we obviously need like the um, the uh, sweat the. Uh, uh, well, I forgot what he says after, but yeah, you have the vocals. You have, yeah, it. yeah, I have the vocals stripped already. You so download it already. Yeah, I got it ready to go. Okay. Um, I stripped a few other things already with it, but it's dope, right? I, I didn't like the way it stripped. Um, that remember that Afro beat track? I wanted to uh, kind of make an edit of. Is it a house song? Uh, it is. It's Afro beat kind of house, kinda, but yeah, that's kind of hard to strip. It, 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 it was. It's tough because there's like shit ton of instruments, so I kind of get it. But like, I was mad disappointed because I really <laughs> wanted to fucking do it. So now you know you just got to do it simpler. And I was trying, and then it got. It's it's a tough one. It's a tough one to. Just, to, just to, sam- to sampling is a uh, like real sampling, like taking a sound and then like you know let's for instance throw it into simpler. Um, yeah, but you can get those those one shots. You just gotta like. Move the cursor yourself. To it's a lot of work. It's not it's a, a joke. Yeah, it's yeah. not a joke. I was doing it. I was getting so frustrated. I was like, "Fuck this song! I'm not fucking doing this." I'm like, "What do I think of it? I don't care." And then, uh, I mean, from that, I started just doing different shit. Bro, so, when I when I really learned sampling this year, I have the I have the ultimate respect for the uh, like some of the best samplers in in the game because. It's hard work sample sampling, man. Like, and a lot of these, a lot of these greatest like hip hop songs that were sampled, they listened to like '70s songs and they took little pieces out throughout the song, like what you would never assume they would take out of. You know, they took just little snippets, and then they either stretched it or slowed it down. Like the Mob Deep one, for me, is like one of like the way I they love that had. Instagram page, man. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah, fucking track sick. Lib. Yeah, a track lib or a track. Sample, whatever. I think it's track lib, you're right. Yeah, because they um they sell samples, but yeah, man, it's dope how and Kanye West samples all the time too. And like you know, I used to think, oh, they find a sound, they take it, and you know, they they mess around with it, but now that I learned it and that I'm trying to do it, oh man, it's it's tedious work. That's what it is. Nah, it's tedious. But once you start watching, because I watch a lot of YouTube videos on it. Like once you like get the hang of it, some dudes are just fucking nasty, yeah, and they yeah. just like hear it and they go whoop whoop. It's what you do. It's like this is the quickest way to sample track, blah blah. blah. And you watch him, you're like, bro, like get the fuck out of here. You just have to have an i, an idea. Well, first uh, well you have, yeah, you have, how you want to you wanna slice it? Yeah, like you, you have to have hear a sound you want, right? And then get that sound, and then you know, kind of I think have an idea of what at least you want to do, and it might change as you're like messing around with it, but. At least going in with an idea. If you're just going in like, oh, I want to sample a song. And you start listening to songs. And no, you have to hear a part like with you, with this. You know, you're like, oh, I want to sample that. I want to sample that. You know, you knew what you wanted to sample already. And you had this idea in your head. And we put it up. We, you know, we put it together. There's one song I really want to sample. The one that I sent you. I just think it has a gangster intro. No, yeah. It, it, that one's fucking sick. It, you know what, what I was thinking about? Um was uh the mob deep track when they sampled the uh, the old stove clicking oh yeah yeah tick, and tick, 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 yeah and I, yeah i think that's fucking amazing like yeah. even even when they didn't have like the technology we have now where people literally make mini studios in their apartment like like we do basically well you have you have a studio in your house but i think that's dope and it just shows you it's like there's no barriers to this shit you know bro they used to cut so you know how we set you know you can set like simpler Bro, they used to have tape, and they would have to listen to it and cut out the tape of the parts that yes. they wanted. Yes, bro. That's that's cr- that's insane, man. That's crazy. That is that is the that is the craziest shit. And I, I've seen them do it, and they have to like cut it and then reattach. It. I'm like, bro, what? Even in early days in DJing, they used like the cassette film to DJ. I don't know if you ever seen that like infamous video of the Russian guy like DJing on those two. Um, a tracks, a track. No, maybe I think I saw something like that. 
I remember when I first started DJing, I uh, I wasn't DJing this party, but I wasn't a DJ yet. I just had just gotten equipment, but or I think I wanted to DJ. And this part, this place had there was a house party I went to, and they had a turntable, and on the other side they had a cassette player. <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, let me let me try to play." They were like, "All right, good, good." And you, there was a little mixer, and you know, you had a record, you played a record, and then on the other side, you played a tape. So to you know, you would press play to like bring it in. Tape and record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's that's what I was talking about too. Yeah, you would just whatever you had, you work with it. I mean, yeah, it's crazy how technology pushed it forward to the detriment and to the benefit. I think to the benefit. Yeah, it's always to the benefit. So it's whatever. Yeah. I mean, when they were cutting tape, they didn't have much, much competition, right? And then when because the nobody MP- was doing that shit, nobody's cut. Imagine now kids yeah, trying to love- cut tape. Yeah, no right. one's fucking doing that. Or using a CDJ without a cool little LED screen. No, I I used to have the Denon. This was before. I mean, there were C, there were CDJs, but they were corny, like those, the first CDJs that ever came out. You know, like ugly pioneer things. But I had the the Denon nine thousands, which was dual CD player, and they had like the little jog wheel on them where you could scratch. The scratching was terrible. It didn't it didn't sound nothing like records. But it was it was something new and it was like top of the line at the time for for um for Denon and Pioneer didn't have anything that was like this. But then Pioneer came out with the um the CDJ the MK one, and I didn't have those. And then I got the MK twos. I used to love those things, man. I used to bring them to like certain lounge venues that had still had like Denons or. Or didn't have anything, I would bring those things. And I never had a case for them, which is crazy. Yeah, I remember carry you were telling like me that. that you would carry them around. I'm like, yo, but like I know you, like you, you'll fucking carry that shit. Like because you want to play on it. Like you will yeah. carry that show through Manhattan yep. on the fucking subway. It doesn't matter that shit's under your 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 fucking arm and it's going with you, two of them, you know? Yeah, no, I was I was I wasn't on the train with those things, bro. I don't want to get robbed. <laughs> but uh but yeah, I had the MK2s. I had the MK2s. I had techniques, of course. And I wish I would have kept the techniques, man, because I, I I never thought that they would go they would stop selling them. Now to buy one of those, it's like twelve hundred dollars, bro. Fifteen hundred, sometimes three thousand. I can't lie, the pioneer ones they made aren't that bad. I've been thinking yeah, about I buying seen, one. I yeah, DJs they're pretty that. nice. Yeah. They're pretty nice and like it's all about they they have like the little like cushion in the bottom the little bounce and shit. I mean you could also buy one you put it on there's like two dollars. I actually want uh, to get one of those. Too, yeah. Me too. There's I'm thinking. I've been like thinking about feel. it. Yeah, I've been like thinking about it. it. The pioneers, the pioneers are nice to scratch on, but it doesn't come anything close to like scratching or touching yeah. like a real vinyl. So, but those I think might, I think that might be dope because I saw one of one of uh. My boys that I that is a club DJ and he uses he's like a turntable list and he uses them. So I saw him using them, so I'm like, oh, they must be legit. Yeah. I mean I've seen I've seen them. Have, oh, there's a cheaper version, a more expensive version, eight hundred bucks and three hundred. Uh so I mean if if you're gonna invest, probably will get the best better of the best, right? The cheap man buys the yeah. the cheapest shit twice and yeah, you know, the rich man buys the what uh, the thing correctly and then, once. Yeah, and, you, and then you get the cheap one and then you're like, ah, oh, but the other one must be a lot better than this one. It's like, yeah. There's limitation. I hate being limit, limit, limited when it comes to like anything with music. That's why like, I feel like I need to like upgrade some of my shit, but production is more important now for me. Yeah, most definitely. And there's investing money like, into it. Cause you can always go to the studio and fucking, if you want to really like DJ on something or try something, there's tons of studios, not only like, you know, pirate or anything, you could really, you know, figure, you could find whatever you want. You could find, especially in New York. Yeah. But even the interesting part that there's a lot of like these huge DJ stores and outlets in smaller towns in the United States too. Uh, like yeah. I, I follow like DJ store, like just like kind of DJ oh, kind of like little they hubs sell DJ and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like you know, I, I follow one. It's called Mile High DJ Supply, mm-hmm. and they're from like Minneapolis or like Salt Lake City, and just like it's it's weird, like. I mean, everybody, the DJing is all around the world, right? It's not set around house music, but they have, yeah. they buy Dinan Primes, uh, the, uh, not Dinan, excuse me, the the, the new Prime uh, Pioneer joint. Mm-hmm. Um, they have all the different techniques and shit like that. So I'm like, you know, it's interesting because there's, there's a lot of sub little like cultures around there's the United a lot States of, too. Uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call those? Uh, the, mobile, the mobile DJs in the wedding. 
Ah, that's wedding, right. Mobile parties, corporate DJs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Actually, the that new Pioneer thing, whatever it's called, Op- Optimus Opus. It there's a feature that that they just put on on their uh, on their Instagram that it has, and let's say you, there's two floors, and th- it's obviously not for a club, but maybe for like a let's go a wedding, right? You have a reception area, and then you have like the main ballroom. So you can now play different music in two different places. So you can have music for like the reception area where it's just slow music. You don't have to worry about it, right? You're not DJing. And then you have your, you can DJ in the main room music that you want to play. That's fun. That's fire. That's sick. That's sick. Yeah. yeah people discredited it right away. When, once it came out, they said it looks like Atari and shit like that. But I think it's a it really, a dope. Do- it's, it's a dope tool. It has Bluetooth too. Now, I mean, Oh, oh, not blue. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth and then Wi-Fi connection. I think the, even the new CDJs, the three thousands, have that too. Um, people were saying like, "What the fuck do I need Bluetooth for?" Well, actually, you're gonna need it eventually, like yeah. in that instance, right? Uh, to, to plug it in. So you say it now, you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. The party, uh, remember that? Yeah, it saves I, your ass. Yeah, it saves your saves. ass. That saves yep. your ass. Oh, play, play, play Brazilian funk or whatever that, that shorty was saying. Play, play, play Brazilian funk, and we're like, what? So <laughs> papers are young phones. You can come into the DJ booth and be like, all right, all right, fine, whatever. We'll figure it out. So then boom, Bluetooth trick, whoop. And then, yeah. you know, whatever the hell the boom, 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 doop, 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 whatever yeah. the hell. Like, whatever they like. But they were they were jamming, man. They were Cape Verdean. So Cape Verde music, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of like house music, some of it. The, the faster part, the faster ones. Yeah, no, it has all the influences of, like, the drums. Like, house music is totally by so I many mean, different genres. It comes from it's music from Africa, so you know that's where most that's where the music came from, right? That's where it started. There's influence of everything, everything, salsa, hip hop, fucking. I won't say country music because I really don't see any elements of it. Well, actually, I mean, there's rock in it. There's a lot of like deeper house tracks with guitar pluck influences and mm-hmm. shit like that. So it's 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 everything, man. It's the best fucking genre that there is, and that's it. Yeah. There's no there's no debate. It's <laughs> no debate. Yeah. There is none. Yeah, man. All right. So uh, I guess, yeah, we finished this track on Saturday and uh, we'll be right back here next week doing this uh, this pod for the people. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, oh, uh, exactly. And everyone make sure to follow our socials. Number one, Aubrey OFC. We need your support there. We are working on an event. It is coming this summer or at the break of summer. Stay tuned. But there is a party coming, and we're going to live it up and to what we've been talking about and live by the mantra. Number two, Danny Vell's music. Follow him on Instagram, Mixcloud, SoundCloud. SoundCloud every cloud. Everything has that tag. So Google please, cloud. please support us. Uh, you know, this pod does give a lot of game, but you could also associate a lot of things that we talk about to really our socials and kind of the music that we create and things like that. And last number but not least, follow me late night OFC on Instagram, SoundCloud now, uh, soon to come Mixcloud, and the most important part, we need everyone to give us a follow, five stars. It's really important to get the five stars on Spotify, uh, and yeah, we really thank everybody for tuning in. Oh, and the mix. Uh, oh, the and the weekly mix show. On mix this Spotify. is the most important thing. This is one of the most important things. <laughs> Follow us on Mixcloud. Obri OFC. Uh, OFC on Mixcloud. We are now dropping weekly sets. I'm all me and Danny are alternating on a weekly basis. We will have special guests, but there is music every week and you can see our actual DJ styles. If you're just tuning in and listening to what we speak about, you can actually hear the way that we play and take your own kind of um I guess opinions from like how we play and and what we really think of our music and see if we really truly live to our uh, truly live to our opinion, which we do. So whatever you say doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we are really coming hard here. And really, please give us a follow, a like on our sets. Please leave feedback. If you don't like it, let us know. Yeah. And if you're looking for something, please leave feedback too. If you want us to play a certain set, tribal house, um, EDM, whatever you want, we're here for the people. We might even uh, do a B two B on Saturday and record that, put that one up. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah, for sure. It's long overdue. RSR man, and that page we had more support 
on our duo page <laughs> that we do where we're putting in the most work and, and having people, you know, we're actually dropping it for the people, but we are getting playlisted. Mixcloud is doing us good. And we really want our listenership to really hear us out, right? This is what it's about. It's the music, it's DJing, it's production, it's everything. And we live. can go live on Mixcloud now. And it, tune in live Saturday. We'll drop the time on our story on Obri Instagram. Yep. If you follow us, you'll fucking know. Yeah. Dirty, sexy, freak, freak, freak. can't give it all away man saturday we're gonna finish this and we'll come back next week and we might play the track next week you know we might should we sample it next week the whole track little teaser only if we get a certain amount of followers <laughs> no nah, i'm joking absolutely uh and you can see we're switching it up we're improving the power we're showing our music that we're making as it goes next week you're gonna see an almost finished product yeah all right peace out everybody peace <laughs>